All right, so we're started recording. So I'm going to go ahead and show how to put things on Sketchfab. I've got everything else loaded up here, but we'll take a look at this first. Um, and I've got a former project ready to go here. So I made this a long time ago uh, when we were doing asset integration. I think it was like 41 or 44 or something like that. And we wanted to do a health upgrade. And so everyone made a different one, like potions or whatever. And so I made this little thump thump heart that uh, was an asset in Unity that when you collected it would spin around and then burst in the air. Uh, and it was pretty cool. But this was the mesh portion of that. So what we've got here is pretty simple. It's just a modeled heart, um, two, one inside the other because I had them differently textured and the outer one was uh, transparent. But then we've got a very simple skeleton. So you can see just the core and the heart and then a very simple skeleton and the joints are scaling to create that um, thumping kind of motion. And what I did was I saved different FBX files um, with different attributes because I wanted to test whether or not blend shapes would integrate properly with both Unity and also with Sketchfab. I kind of want to know that now. So I have a bunch of different FBX files. I'm going to make a new one though so that you can see that process. So first you get everything in Maya set up the way you want. If you're animating it, animate it. If you're not, then that's fine. Um, and we go to File, Export, and we've got two choices. I can export everything in the scene or I can export just part of what's in the scene. To my knowledge, these option boxes don't really matter because when you click, you get an option box either way. So you're, you're not going to be able to get away with not having an option box on this one, but just whichever one. So the difference here is if I'm not selecting anything, then export selection is not going to do anything. Uh, but if you only want to export certain parts of your scene, then that's a really good option. So let's say I had, um, you know, 12 different items in the scene. I could just grab this one, this set of stuff. Probably want to grab at least that much, maybe all of those parts, and then click Export Selection. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to include everything, and sometimes that includes the cameras. So watch out, your FBX can sometimes include things that you don't want to, although both Unity and Sketchfab are pretty smart, and so it shouldn't really... Um, matter that much. Let's go ahead and just export all, assuming that everything in the scene is something that we want this time. And I'm going to select the folder. Heart modeling is where all this stuff is. And then change the type down to FBX. So as soon as I do that, over on the right hand side we've got all these different menus. And this is the important bit because we have to choose what we want to include in our FBX file. So usually geometry is included. There are some things here that are negotiable like smooth groups. Um, preserve instances, I don't think we'd want that. You could triangulate everything. You could convert NURB surfaces if you really wanted to, but usually there's nothing really important in there to change. Um, animation, if you have animation, you gotta check this on and then set the settings down here. If you don't have animation, then you should probably check that off to make the file smaller. Um, I have it. And then you've got the option to bake animation if you want to. What this means is that everything that has keyframes, it'll go through one frame at a time and it'll make a new keyframe um, for it so that your animation will display exactly the way that you intend. I don't think this is actually necessary for Sketchfab I, I know it's not necessary for Unity, but I'm not so sure it's necessary for Sketchfab. The only problem that could exist is that if my animation makes like liberal use of tangent handles in the graph editor, not including this could make my animation appear different, but we'll leave it off for now and see what happens. And then underneath this animation setting, which is all of this, um, we've got lots of other stuff, but deform models is sometimes important skin, yeah, we want to include skin. Blend shapes. I was using blend shapes for this heart at one point. Currently I'm not, so it's not going to make a difference. And then I don't think the rest of this really is going to matter. Curve filter, I'm not sure what that is. That could have something to do with the graph editor. But we'll just uh, say that that's enough. Animation, that's all. Cameras. Probably don't include your cameras. There's no real reason to unless you're trying to make a separate scene and it's just going to clutter up your FBX. Lights, Sketchfab won't accept lights, so I'm just going to turn that off. 
audio. It is possible to embed audio in a Maya file, but I'm going to leave that off as well. And then one extra setting that's important, this embed media um, bracket. If you have textures, you need to click this. Okay. So if you have a, a diffuse map or a normal map or any combination of those things, click this to put them directly in the FBX file. Then you don't have to take them around in like a separate folder. It can be a really, really big help. My file doesn't have any textures right now, so I can leave this off, but that's a really good one. Um, last thing would be in the advanced options, there are things like units and axis conversion. If you ever need to do something really weird, like change which direction is up, you can do that in axis conversion or change how big the file is for some reason. You can do that in units. I recommend that you don't mess with this unless you have a reason to, okay? All right, so all of that now thought through, I can come down here and give this a name. We'll call this one heart test, just so it's separate from those other ones. And I may try one or two of these other ones because I labeled them to tell me what I included. This one had uh, blend shapes and animation. This one had just animation baked. This one had blend shapes and this one had blend shapes and baked animation. So it might be interesting to see what happens there. So I hit export and now over in my folder, heart test right here. You can see it's tiny, 98 kilobytes because there's hardly anything in there. These were my Maya files. We could upload those as well. Sketchfab's smart enough to know what to do with that, but an FBX is safer. Okay. So let's go ahead and try and see what happens when we upload. By the way, I noticed when I opened Sketchfab today that there is a um, texturing challenge going on. Uh, if you go there and um, look at that, they'll give you this dog and you can texture it. Could be a cool exercise for someone. I'm going to go to Upload. And it says go ahead and drag and drop. We support FBX, OBJ, DAE, which I don't know, uh, Blend files. STL is like 3D printing files. Um, and many others, which you can read about right here, but just drag it into the window. So I'm going to take my file, heart test, and just drag it in and then upload. So we'll see what we get. So this upload credit, by the way, I, I mentioned it one other time. If you set your model to be downloadable for free or sell it, then it doesn't count towards this upload credit. If you want it to be private, then you need upload credits and you get one per month. So that finished. Um, we can write a description and do categories and stuff like that if we want to, or we can jump right over to see our 3D settings. And that's what I want to do. I want to see how it came through. So I'm going to click this edit 3D settings button. So this is the interface for messing around with Sketchfab files. And we can see what happened. Uh, I may not have smoothed the edges on my heart, I didn't even really think about that. So this is how it looks, completely opaque because I had no materials included. Uh, we do have lots of different tabs up here on the left. And down at the bottom, you can see I've got static pose and take one, which is the name of the animation clip. Um, in Maya, I'm not exactly sure how to change the names of the animation clips. I can do it in Blender and Unity, but I don't know how to do it directly from Maya. I'm sure there's a way. Uh, I just haven't thought about it. So the animation came through just fine. Okay, there it goes. And let's take a look at the materials first. So I only have one material. This would be the same as you named it in Maya. And then I can set the various attributes. Since I didn't include any textures, I can just change the color like that. And I can also change the transparency. There's opacity. So we've got a different um, modes for opacity. Let's just turn this down. So something like this is what I was intending to have. Actually, that looks a lot better already. For some reason, a mission is on, which is glow in the dark. We don't really need that, so I'll just turn that off. And then I could just mess with anything else, like make it more shiny or less shiny. Let's increase how shiny it is. Uh, we've also got some default lights in this scene because they always do that. Um, actually, okay, so right now it's not lights. It's uh, a environment map. So if I turn that off, you can see nothing is lit now. And you can pick from some preset images like that. I think the only thing it would be changing is reflection and kind of light source at the moment. Eh, 
I really like that. Or you can turn this off and then use actual lights up here at the top. Uh, you can also turn on ground shadows. So if, uh, if you look really carefully, I think we can see one. Let's turn this one on less brightness. I think there was a ground shadow. Well, a ground shadow, they'll sort of help you place uh, a ground underneath your object and give it a sort of cast shadow or a little um, sort of blur on the ground underneath the invisible ground. Let's turn on these lights. I'm going to turn off the environment so we can see what they're doing. And then here in the um, editor, you can see you can move these lights, you can rotate them. They've got different types as well. Direction is the most common. Uh, point lights are, are possible. These are very limited, by the way. And so don't think that you can light an entire scene with them very nicely. You really can't. Uh, Salvo has a question. What about ArtStation to upload? Show us how to upload from FBX or other. So what I would do for ArtStation is once I'm done with this and I publish it, I would copy the link into ArtStation. That's all. So I'll show you that after this, though. Um, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and upload this little heart just so that we have that example. ArtStation, um, a single published work is a collection. So it can be images and videos and three-dimensional interactive files, any combination of those things. I did a couple a few days ago so I could like just open those up and show you what's in them. Um, but they're more like galleries. So you make a bunch of little individual galleries. Um, for each one of these lights up here, by the way, we can turn them on or off. Uh, we can change their colors right here. So we could make it, I don't know, yellow. Uh, change its intensity. And you can uh, make these attached to camera, which is interesting. It means that as you move around in your camera, um, the light will stay relative to your eyeball position. Uh, you can also make it cast shadows, although I don't know what I would be casting shadows on in this case. Um, finally, shadow bias is just if your um, object is too big or small or it has thin walls, sometimes this helps to correct it. For the most part, just don't mess with that one. Okay, so there we go. I've got a few lights. I'll just uh, leave it about like this. That's fine. And then if we turn on environment, Nah. Oh, we can set a background too. Let's see. Okay, so now it's like coloring the the background back there. Kind of looks nice just to have something other than a white field. Uh, or I think we can disable that. Yeah, just have gray. So we'll leave it like this. Uh, one thing you do want to do when you're uploading to Sketchfab is save a view. I'm going to pause the animation. I'm going to pause it at like a distorted moment like that and get my camera somewhere that makes sense for a thumbnail and then click this save view button. Um, this will be how it appears when you're browsing Sketchfab files. So it's a good idea to navigate your camera to somewhere interesting before you do that. Um, that way you can present it at its best. A couple other things just really rapidly to show this. There are some um, basic scene settings. Uh, matte cap is like a sculpture file. PBR is what you get. Photo-based rendering like we have right now. You can change the shading to um, unlit if you want to do that for like cartoony purposes. Change the camera field of view. Display the wireframe all the time or not. And decide whether or not you want to have any background at all. And then finally, post-processing can be really nice if you want um, a highly developed looking uh, image at the end. We can turn on photo bloom. We can turn on vignetting, which is darkening around the corners of the screen, all sorts of things. This gets really annoying because a lot of people turn on every single one of them. Don't do that. Just turn on a couple if you really need it. And if you don't need any of them, then just turn them all off and leave them like this. Okay. Annotations are really only good if you've got a scene that has a lot of different things going on and you have to put sort of waypoints in the scene. Um, wherever you double click, it will create a marker that you name. And when you click on it, your camera will fly over there. So not really good for this scene, but I could open up a different project of mine where I have them. Um, the animation mode, you can rename the take if you want to right here. Um, include or not include the static pose. Talk about the looping and speed. There's virtual reality support and there's sound support, but we won't go into that. So I'm going to hit Save Settings. And then I can hit Publish. And then this is available for anybody to view. There we go. There's my one private credit. I'll copy that, paste it in the chat over there. So you can go look at it wherever you are, but it's going to look exactly like this up on the screen. So I'm going to hit exit. 
uh, called heart test. There it is. Okay, and I'll hit save, and then go view. Oh, there were a couple extra buttons I did just see. Wow, looks very glowy in this view. Wub dub, wub dub, there it goes. Uh, if I want to edit it, I think I have to go up to here, view my models. And then there's a little gear button here. I did just see right before I hit um, to go all the way out, over on the right, allow texture inspection. So if you want people to be able to view your 2D textures, click that on. Uh, and I guess this one's age restriction content if you're worried about that sort of thing. Um, who can see this? You could set it to anyone with the link, which is requiring an upgrade, or anyone with a password, which requires an upgrade. So they're going to be public uh, unless you buy a subscription. And you ideally should just make them free to download if you don't want to um, count against that limit. That's fine. You still, you know, are clearly the creator of this thing. Usually a Creative Commons license is something that people do where they just say, just attribute me. Um, but I wouldn't worry about it too much if it's just kind of practice work. So that's the process for uploading to Sketchfab. You can see there's the thumbnail as it appears, and I've done this a number of different times. Let's look at, uh, oh, and it previews like this, like a three-dimensional rotation as well. Let's go look at ArtStation, like Salvo said, and I'll show you what it's like to upload there, or at least what my um, collection of stuff looks like. What do I look at? My, oh, Manage Portfolio is probably the one. So I got all of this stuff in my portfolio and I just uploaded a bunch of different animation clips um, the other day, as well as updated this one, which contains lots of stuff. So I'll show this one because it's got the most complicated uh, stuff inside of it. So every time you say upload, it takes you to this page and here are your options, right? You give the entire thing a title, you can upload images, video clips, videos straight from social media sources. So these two are different. There's a limit on the video clip size, so be careful about that. Um, Sketchfab, right there, Marmoset Viewer, and 3D Pano, which I've never actually tried, but seems cool. Uh, what I've got down in this single project is the Sketchfab file, the original uh, uh, painting done by um, Brendan Dew, uh, character turnaround that I did, floor plan and a painting that I did for the, the project and a description which credits both Brendan and a bunch of the students that worked on it. So we set up all of that stuff and then hit save. And you also set up a uh, thumbnail by either uploading something or by cropping one of your existing images. And that's what people will preview when they're looking in your gallery. Okay, So just for a test here, I'll make a new one new artwork and I'll name this art go to sketchfab paste the link that I just gave you guys should do it maybe I have to enter oh you know what it's not working hmm. maybe I need to do something else let's see Upload properties, 3D setting. Let me go check it out. Didn't seem to want to do that one. Hmm. It could be that since I just uploaded it, it's not viewing it as being legal yet. Uh, I can click the share or embed. Let's do share. Copy that. Yeah, that should be the right one. Paste a Sketchfab URL here. Hmm. It's like not recognizing it. Let's try the embed instead. Oh, wow. That's very complicated. Well, I'll copy it anyway. No, it doesn't like that. <laughs> so what do I need to do here? Oh, you know what? Instead of clicking share or that, I could just copy right up here from the address bar. I think I'll do that. I'll probably solve it. There we go. So I don't know, the, the share link didn't work, but just do it straight up from the address bar. And so I hit save. And now it's going to appear as one of the things in this gallery. I don't actually want to 
do this. Okay. One more time. So you go up to upload in the upper right hand side of ArtStation, new artwork, and that will bring you to this window where you give it a name. You go to Sketchfab and then on your model listing page, wherever it is that you can view your model, just copy the address from the address bar at the top and then paste that in this field and then hit save and it will be included in this ArtStation listing. Here we go. You can give each thing an individual caption if you want to. The artwork description happens on the sidebar when you view um, someone's project. We could crop a thumbnail just like that. And then if I click save, then this is saved in my projects, but publish is what will make it available for everyone. And like I said, I don't actually want to publish this, so I'm just going to bail out of here. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Do we have any questions, you guys, about that process of uploading to Sketchfab and ArtStation? You guys good? You very quiet? Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Yep. Uh, I will show you real quick the complicated one because it has annotations on it. And also it's got textures. I'm not sure if I said that I could allow people to view the 2D textures, but let's find out. Model inspector. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. So over here, once you click on something, double click on it. Oh, I think I have to pick a channel like diffuse. There we go. So here's the diffuse page for this whole building. Um, is Juan here? A oh, Juan is here. Juan, this is a very complicated trim sheet. So basically there's one texture across most of this building and everything, you can see the little red dot is somewhere on this huge sheet. You can see down there, like this is a better trim sheet example. You can see that this is a tiled texture all across this floor, even though it looks seamless when you take the mouse away. Same thing with the metal. If I highlight this metal, we go, you can see that many, many different places, the trim of this building is repeated. And all of the metal is right here and right here. And a little bit over here for like the staircase in the back. Same thing with the brick. The brick is all over the building in different places, but the only brick you'll find on the sheet is right here. All right, so all over the place, there we go. And it, was, it took a little bit of work to make this tile correctly. You can find places where it is almost wrong right here. If I take the mouse away, it's kind of invisible. But this is a place where this wall was too long for the trim sheet that I made, and I didn't make it tile perfectly. So you can almost catch it. Sometimes I do it behind like a pipe or something. Go back to just 3D. Then if you take a look, there's these different numbers. Those are the annotations. If you click on those, then you can cycle through all of the different annotations that take you to various parts of the building as well. So this is a far more complicated project than the one I was just showing, but the upload process is essentially the same. It's an FBX with animation baked and lots of embedded textures. Actually not lots of embedded textures, a few embedded textures. Okay, cool, there you go. All right, you guys, all good? Make sense? Yep. Great. All right, just wanted to get that out of the way. Let's take a look at what we have due today. Uh, Salvo has a question real quick. Yeah.
Just waiting for him to type it out. Uh, if I use animation camera and in Sketchfab, will it show my camera animation like a movie or will it prevent to force you to use the Sketchfab camera option? It will force you to use Sketchfab's camera. You can't animate the camera. Yeah, that's a limitation. So treat Sketchfab projects like a 3D environment that you upload, but you don't have control over where the camera goes unless you use those annotations and they don't animate between one to the other. They only show a specific point. You don't have to animate the camera. You can upload to Sketchfab. If you want to animate a camera, you can do it directly in Maya, and we can also do it in Unity. You know what I just thought? There is a sneaky way that you could kind of like make a camera sort of work in Sketchfab, but I'm thinking it's not a good idea. If you had um, at least one bone and skinned your entire scene to that one bone, you could move that bone in the opposite way that your camera would move, and it would be as if your camera was moving, but then you'd have to lock the Sketchfab camera. I think it's a bad idea to try that, but I, it just occurred to me that that's possible. Okay. So Salvo, you don't have to have the animated cameras for your projects for me, so don't worry about that. But if you do want to do that, then directly in Unity would probably be the best way. Or sorry, directly in Maya would probably be the best way. Okay, so we're on week five now, and last week I had a bunch of people that I never heard from and had things do to me. And I think a few of them have uploaded since then. Possibly that one we've seen before. Lego Crystal Finders. I don't think we've ever seen that one before. So Eric has one up there now. Uh, Paul has something. That's not the same thing as last time, right? Let's see what that one is. And then Austin we did look at. So we did have a bunch of people that had things that I never got to see. This week we have even more people with stuff due. And so I'm kind of nervous to see if some people are just no longer uh, responding or maybe they've dropped the course and I didn't realize it. Um, I can see a couple of these have like crossed out stuff already, which is odd. I don't know why, because we can put the letter A there to say abandoned um, to indicate that we, we're not going to turn anything in. Or you could just delete it ahead of time if we're not up to the due date and just move things around. So consider that if it's any of you that are doing that. Um, so first, let me see the ones that I have not viewed yet, which I think is Eric's. Let me give that a shot. Okay, it says we can't find anything. So Eric, if you're watching this, the upload didn't work properly. It could be like a few of the past uh, projects that I've seen that you didn't change the type of project to um, HTML and include the right stuff. Double check the upload instructions on Canvas to make sure. Okay. And then, Paul, I'm not sure if this is one that we saw or not. Rocks and ore. Yeah, this is a new one. Let's take a look. So we got a bunch of rocks. Okay, gray. <laughs> there we go, this one's got some texture. There's some uh, really stretchy UVs on here, uh, Paul, so you might want to watch out for that. Uh, let me, it was Paul, right? Who's am I looking at? Yeah, it is Paul, okay. Uh, let me look at the wireframe, but also UV checker. So you see this UV checker reveals how stretchy and inconsistent the actual unwrapped UVs are on that one. Um, so watch out there because it's really distorting your texture. Okay. Um, same thing kind of on this as well. We can see corners, this pinchy like wavy kind of stuff. That's a big no-no and you want to be really careful about it. It can be quite hard to unwrap a rock um, so that you have no scenes. There are certain softwares that will help you with that by creating uh, seamless textures more easily, but uh, Maya just directly doesn't really help very much. Uh, even this one looks like it's a little bit stretched in this lower portion. I think you need to do a better UVing job here. 
With that said, I can't tell entirely if these are photo-based or painted. This one looks a bit painted. This one looks photo-based. That one looks, mm, I'm not sure, maybe Photoshop generated or, or photo. And then this one could go either way. It's kind of pleasing, but I can't tell if you painted that or photo sourced it or did both, which is kind of a good thing because at least it's a bit more complex. Probably photograph, but yeah, we're getting some real bad stretching here and there. Okay, so then we got some bumpier gray ones. There we go. All right, so if you are doing this to just kind of test the capability of uploading with textures, then that's cool. If you're trying to make these things look like actual real world minerals, then you're really far off from the mark. Um, I don't know what most of them are. Like this one looks like a rock, that looks like a rock, like granite or something. Most of these ones, I couldn't tell you. Um, let's just for the sake of argument, say that this yellow one is supposed to be gold, okay? Here's what you need to do. Google gold. Look at the images. Compare them to what you have. Weep openly into your hands. No, I'm kidding. Um, we have to try to simulate this, okay? We have to try to make your stuff look like this stuff. If we're talking about gold ore, that one, then it's gotta look like this. And what you're probably thinking is, how the heck am I gonna make it look like that? Well, it's gonna take more than just a single color to do this. You've got to think about how is it shiny? How shiny is it? Is there texture in the shine? Um, how rough is it? Does it need a roughness map? Does it need um, maybe subsurface scattering in some cases? Do I need to change the diffuse color to something different from the reflected color? So for an example, let's look at a gold bar because it's kind of easier to see on a gold bar like right here. Wherever the light is not shining on the gold bar, it's very dark like burnt orange brown down to black when the light shines on it we get this highlight of light yellow almost white right and then also it can be highly reflective too to the point that you're going to need an environment map like i was demonstrating earlier in order to reflect that stuff properly that's what will make it feel like gold the color of the gold is probably going to be very very dark dark brown i would suggest and then the reflected color is very light, like a light yellow. And then it needs to be highly reflective at the very least. And then you're going to be closing in on something more like a real mineral. Okay. But a gold bar and a gold rock are not going to share the same texture because they're completely different. The rock is rough. The bar is poured and smooth. Right. Um, I don't have any idea what the blue one is. We'll assume one of these is coal. Probably, maybe iron. Let's do iron. Let's search for iron. Ah ha ha ha. That kind of iron. Iron mineral. Mineral. I swear I can type. Here we go. Okay. Iron. Interesting. Ooh, hematite looks really cool too. Okay. So iron has, you know, this dark kind of chalky sort of appearance, but also all of these little reflective flecks in the surface. Hmm. Magnetite kind of feels like graphite. Here's some iron ore right here. It has uh, maybe a little bit of oxidation, which would be rust, right? Very often you're going to find that. Slightly different colors, a lot of speckling. Okay, very characteristic things about this particular rock. But if I type in, like, let's do iron bar, iron, okay, like block. So this is Photoshop, not really the actual mineral. Iron bar, there we go. This is more like a photograph. You want to be careful about your reference too, because like, yeah, I Googled iron and found this, but that's not going to help you. You need photographs to understand what it is you're making. Um, so that doesn't help very much, right? High quality square iron bar. This also looks like steel rather than iron of that high polish. So you may want to type 
photograph or you might want to go to tools type and choose picture oh wait it doesn't allow me clip art line drawing and gif where's photograph on here we can't choose photograph all right well I'll type the word photo photo iron bar photo wow that didn't help <laughs> okay well there are some so you can see the way that this is machined the way that iron is created creates a completely different look from the raw ore and then if you wanted to go for like a weathered kind of effect it's different still you may go straight to a stock image site like this one certainly a lot more interesting rusty iron bars here so this makes it much more characteristic much more specific and that's the only way that these things are going to be satisfying because right now you're kind of just changing the color and you got to put a bit more into it than that this one's probably the most successful this rock over here partially because both of these forms work nicely and the texture is interesting um, but the rest of them fall pretty short of what they could be and I, I don't really have any idea what you're going for here I was looking at the description maybe you'd said so okay so again I don't know what your um, intent was for it but that's what I would guess needs to be done if you're going for a real kind of uh, photo real effect map cap and surf so we can actually see where your bump maps are here and it's good to have one you know good to have a normal map or a bump map but think about more specifics in a particular kind of mineral or material so that you can get it to look really really nice like these real world materials up here well, anybody else want to give him any feedback that I didn't say nope all right thank you so then I think that was it because we watched Austin's last time okay so now this week I do actually see Nathan has one already. Let's take a look. So uh, what'd you do? You updated the mechanics of the, the fish game? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you, you're you able to use WASD now. Oh. And like, you had to go through, you're basically swimming through a cave. Okay. And like, pillars of spikes will be up and down. Okay, this is like a totally new game then. Yeah, I mean, still the score... UI isn't showing for some reason, mm -hmm. but that's like basically the only problem. Um, do you use uh, layers for your UI versus your uh, sprites in game? Uh, I use the uh, the canvas is a score text. Yeah, but uh, sometimes yeah. you need to put things on a display layer. Okay, no, I I didn't do that. So display layers are independent from the UI. They're they're just something about your objects in your game. And they're up in the right hand mm -hmm. side at the top of the inspector. Um, take a look at the layers up there and try to put your UI on a layer that's in front of the other stuff and maybe it'll work better. Did I just okay. lose or did I hit something there? Yeah. I... <laughs> Some of the, like the land is like clunky and big. Oh yeah. Like, like the hit like, box. If just, like if you go up a little bit, you might just hit it. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, watch yeah. out for the hitboxes. Do you know how to make your own custom collision box? Oh, uh, no. I'm just using the box uh, the box collider, and I, okay. I'm trying to modify it. Uh, so, yeah, you do need to, to make your own custom collision box. And that can be done in the import settings for a sprite that you put into Unity. Oh, okay. Um, where did you get the, the pictures of rocks and stuff? Oh, I just got, I just got them online from a... From like an open source site or something? Yeah, open source. Yep. Okay. So when you import it into Unity uh, in the, the project window at the bottom, click mm -hmm. on it and then look at the inspector. And uh, you should be able to go into the sprite editor and make a custom collider in there. Uh, I could demonstrate that right now. I don't think we have anything else to look at. So we could just do that. You want to take a look? Yes, sounds good. All right, let's do that. Let me open up. I'm going to close Maya, assuming we don't have to use it anymore. And I'm going to open up Unity. Because so I actually have, I think, a sprite sheet already loaded in. And I can just make a custom collider. All right, so give it a couple moments here. Unity is usually a little bit slow to open. 
Did you manage to accomplish everything you wanted to in your project, though? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, unless if I want to make extra levels, but I might just skip to the next project. I think that'd be a good idea. Go to go to the next project. You've yeah. done a lot with that. All right. So I was doing this. I'll just show you guys what this is. This is for my rigging and animation class, um, where I made May from uh, Night in the Woods. And then I made these leaves that you can whack up into the air. And so what they're going to have to do is make their own character using this same character controller and supply the uh, animations for it. Whee! So in import, here is the sprite sheet that I used to make that character. So all the disconnected pieces. So when you click on uh, one of your images, see it's just a PNG down in the project file. Over here in the inspector, it shows all the import settings here. Uh, some of them that are important, like sprite mode, you can set it to multiple to have a bunch. Um, what texture type it is, the mesh type. So right now I've got it set to tight. Um, that's good because it means I can make a different uh, shape. Full rectangle would prevent that. So tight is the one that you want. Then sprite editor, there's a button right here. So here in the sprite editor, I could either cut up this sheet into different sprites. It's easiest to see the ones I've got right now because uh, their rectangles are visible if I click this button that turns off full color. Uh, but over in the upper left, we could do custom outline, which would allow me to slice into this existing rectangle to trim out parts of it, or custom physics shape, which is what you actually want. So for custom physics shape, we'll go and click um, what should we click? Let's click the, the eyebrow wrinkle. And so now when I draw a shape in here, it's going to give me these little points. And you can't go outside the rectangle. You can drag them right up to the edge. But I'll make this custom collider. Oh, you, that's cool. Yeah, when you click and drag on the line, it'll make a new one. Uh, if you click on an existing point and then hit delete, you can get rid of it to simplify. And so now this is essentially like a polygon collider. So I'm going to hit apply. And so now just for that one piece, I'll be able to apply um, a custom outline. So over here in my scene, I'm going to open up this sheet so I can see all the different sprites. This one, which is like one of her pupils, is not going to be capable of having its own custom collider. But this one, the eyebrows will. All right, so here we've got both of them. The eyebrow shape, sprite renderer, I'm going to add a component. No, not that. Physics 2D, and you're using Box Collider, right? Yep. So you want to use a, well, there's a composite collider now, a polygon collider. And so you can see it immediately took on the correct shape because I already made it in the, the sprite editor, uh, polygon collider. But for this one, if I do a polygon collider, it shouldn't do that. Let's try. Oh, it guessed. Wow. And it guessed pretty well. So I clearly didn't make that one, but it just kind of made it for me. It said, all right, well, you're putting a polygon collider on here, so I'll do my best. And, and it just kind of threw that one on there. So you may be able to get away with that. Also, you may have noticed in the import settings, you can click this generate physics shape button. And that should make a custom collider for you automatically. I don't quite know what the settings are, but it'll it'll do its best job. Okay? All right, sounds good. So that'll get you a lot closer. Cool, all right. And no, I don't want to save any of that stuff. Okay, uh, so do we have anyone else's work that we need to view today? Sounds like a no. Let's go ahead and go um, down. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, uh, actually, to, uh, on today, I, I expected to have hit the goal, uh, but we had some problems with uh, Source Tree, so we, we lost a little time. So uh, we're shooting for Friday. But um, I did update it with the stuff that I worked on. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the same link as before, but um, th there's audio in it now and uh, a main menu. Okay. Uh, I don't know how loud it, it will be, so I'm just a, a little warning, Steve. Hmm, uh, let's see. I'm going to 
turn down my system volume. <laughs> we tested it and it's, it sounded uh, good. Just, uh, you know, just a little warning just in case it's blaring. Okay. I just turned down my system volume to like half. Okay. Can you guys actually hear that? We can't hear it on our end. No? Okay. On the recording, they can. So your portion was what? Uh, it was to uh, make it a little bit more uh, user friendly with the uh, main menu and uh, just uh, with with the audio with the buttons and completing the levels and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, it we're... seems a lot slicker already. Thank you. Um, what? What we're just uh, th this this will probably be the last iteration before we move on to a new project. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're just waiting to uh, improve or I guess add a, a different kind of level, and then we'll okay. have that ready on Friday. I would say just based on what I know about gamers, they would want your best time to be saved. You know, compared to your current time, so that they could try to compete. And probably uh, taking a little uh, tip from Flash games. They always had like a sound or mute button just visible on the screen at all times, so you could just click it. That would be a really good feature because some people hate audio, some people love it, and it would just allow people to uh, mute it. Okay. So if it's if you have time for that by Friday, great. If you don't, it'll be good for me. Cool. All right, man. Very nice. I'm gonna turn my system volume back up so I can hear things properly. Okay, so let me go down a list in the call of people who are here, just in case I need to check in. Uh, Alan, I just spoke with you, and so that would be Juan. Uh, Juan, do you have anything that you need to update me on? I'm just working on my uh, prop design. Okay, and you don't have anything due at all, so I'm not yeah, expecting. I have a quite. Uh, I put a lot of. Uh, I have a lot of time to work on it. So I think. So right now I'm just uh, making like a, a crate, mm -hmm. and I was I was thinking of doing the crate and like probably like two other things that might uh might be fine inside of it in the game. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Is if I could show you uh, what my work so far? Sure. Are you going to uh, post a link or share screen or what? Uh, share screen. Okay, I'm gonna put Discord up over here. There you go. Oh, cool. Nice, kind of a sci-fi crate. Um, yeah. All right, go ahead and click on it. If we could see, yeah, wireframe. Yeah, I think that's got good potential. Are you going to uh, have the crate be able to open or just uh, closed? I have a lot of time. Uh, I might uh, make uh, be it both. OK, well, if it's both, then it's open because it's yeah. either openable or it's not. Yeah. All you really got to do is do something with the bands so that they're not in the way and then just hinge the lid and then you're good to go. But it would require you making an interior to it. So yeah, I don't make it an afterthought. Either. Think right now, do you want it to open or not? And if not, then just focus on the outside. Um, yeah, because I was thinking of doing uh, putting stuff inside. So yeah, it's, okay. it's going to be able to open. Then think about what it looks like on the inside. Think about how it would open. Because right now, um, two of those bands are, look solid, and they would prevent it from opening. The third one, the middle, looks like it's, it's got a latch. So that one could open. But take that stuff into consideration. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. Looks good to me. Keep going. All right. Thank uh, you. Do I exit out? Yeah. You just stop sharing. All right. Miguel, how's it going? Oh, I'm pushing talk right now. Yep. So, yeah, I've just been doing some... Uh... The guy that I'm watching is doing like an overview, so we'll be getting to actual character sculpting soon, I think. Okay. Going well? Any problems? Uh, just uh, ZBrush is hard. <laughs> yeah. Complicated. 
it's yeah it's a little uh counterintuitive at first but lots of people get used to it so i think you can too are we looking for results by friday yes okay you think you're on track yeah i think so yeah you got the whole week ahead of you all right post up questions probably for robert uh in the chat because he's usually going to be the one to answer those <laughs> yeah definitely all right man uh nate did we talk to you or did we talk to Nathan? I think we did talk to you. Yeah, you talked to me. Okay, cool. Nathan, Morty, how you doing? Doing good, Tabor. What's up? You working on stuff for me? Uh, I'm not in your class. Yeah, I'm I sure. know. But are you working on stuff for me? Um, I'm working on something for a client, but sadly not for you. Boo. I need that sweet, sweet work. <laughs> oh, um... Do you want to see my the work for my client? That might not be a good idea. Sometimes you need to keep that stuff secret uh, if they're paying you to do something. After yeah. it's published, it's usually safe. Yeah, I was going to say psych. Though, oh, okay. I, I, I don't think <laughs> it's anyway. it anyway. It was a good note to, to say to people sometimes. Like if anyone's paying you for work, usually you, you don't want to show that until it's publicly available to everyone else. And then you can put oh. it on your portfolio and stuff. Oh yeah, um, I definitely don't want to get in trouble with this. So very good. All right, consider me psyched. I'm all psyched out. Okay, and then Salvo, uh, any further questions from you? I should click back in the chat window. There we go. Oh, I just did this one. All right. Strike through. Yeah, I did it. Uh, it will be ready on March 22nd. Looks good so far. Almost done. Great. All right, you guys. Then that's going to be it for us today. Just a nice, simple check in and a little demo up front. I'll put that up on YouTube shortly. And uh, then you can refer back to it if you have any problems. Any final questions or concerns? Nope, I'm good. All righty. Thank you, guys. That will be the end for today. Thank right. you.